autumn, Channel 4 presents Allegro, a remarkable retrospective of films by Christopher Newpin, which includes a moving tribute to Jacqueline Dupre. One, three. Stunning photography and unique observations capture exuberant musical performances. The season opens with the stage debut of Daniel Barenboim and Vladimir Ashkenazi playing Mozart's double concerto. Can we just start this once more? Allegro, a classical look to Saturday nights this autumn on 4. Next tonight, Olympic action from Seoul with the second day of the decathlon, the heats of the men's 15,000 metres, Flojo in the women's 200 metres semi-final and three British runners in the semi-final of the men's 5,000 metres. If, like me, you've got gas central heating, you can do a lot to keep your bills down. For instance, insulating your loft properly can pay for itself in under two years. And fitting a snug jacket on your hot water tank will pay for itself even more quickly. Turn your thermostat down a degree or so, too. You'll hardly notice the difference. This free leaflet from British Gas is packed with tips to help you save money this winter. Why not pick up a copy at your gas showroom? We're here to help. Excuse me. You saved my life the other night. <laughs> the dinner party? The coffee. Very successful. How can you ever thank me? I'll try and think of something. In the meantime, at least I can return your gold blend. Look, I'm in the middle of something right now, but perhaps... Perhaps. Now, golden roasted, richer, smoother Nescafe gold blend. Just my neighbor. How's the coffee? Perfect. Where'd you get it from? I have it delivered. Remember the 70s, get and the beat goes on. 34 classic dance tracks with Candy Staten. This great number one from Barry White. Number ones from Gloria Gaynor, The Three Degrees, plus Wild Cherry. 34 top 20 smashes, all full length versions with the Jacksons. And the beat goes on, an unbelievable double album cassette and compact disc from Telstar. Thousand companies have already discovered the Enterprise Initiative, and it's still available to almost every company. One toy maker used the Enterprise Initiative to bring in a marketing expert. Turnover of their teddy bears took off when he suggested they sell them as an in-flight souvenir. Another company used an independent designer to develop an automatic yacht steering system. The Enterprise Initiative will give you access to some of Britain's brightest business experts. Take it before your competitors do. Phone 0800 500 200 for a brochure. Exactly who is Don Swan? He's a charismatic and occasionally aquatic character. Every morning he tunes his body by swimming a couple of lengths. Don's love of the sea is even reflected in the location of his modest little club. Where anyone, anyone wearing a tie, that is, can enjoy a couple of pints of draft swan light. A fully brewed lager that's low in alcohol. It's perfect for a man who has a busy afternoon ahead of him. Anything's possible when you swan lightly. Tomorrow at nine. The Equalizer. There's murder most foul when a kidnap goes horribly wrong. She was my friend. No one said anything about killing a ride. 
We're talking about millions of dollars here. I can't liquidate fast enough. I can't get enough cash. Well, you don't have any choice, buddy boy. Uh, how did it go? She took a swim. We have to talk. The lady's dead. The Equalizer, tomorrow at 9 on ITV. Watching Channel 4, where we take you through the night with live Olympic action from Seoul. Well, no more medals for Britain today and no gold for Carl Lewis in the 200 metres either. Where was God when Carl needed him? After all, yesterday we had Lewis's own word for it, that God had told him everything would be all right in the 100 metres, and lo, it was so. Although if God was responsible for Ben Johnson being caught out, he does indeed move in mysterious ways. However, let's have a look at our guest tonight. First, I'm delighted to welcome Barry McGuigan because the semi-finals of the boxing are coming up. So are the semi-finals of the tennis, which is why Sue Barker is here. Suzanne Dando will talk endlessly about the rhythmic gymnastics, on which subject she's a world-renowned expert. Steve Avette will pop in later when Cram and company go in the 1500 metres heats. And, of course, Daly Thompson continues in the decathlon, hence the presence of Tom McNabb. But now indeed to Daly Thompson in action in the 110 metre hurdles. Just to remind you, though, he finished last night in third place with five more events to come. Will he be happy with that? I wonder. Anyway, Tony Francis is now waiting in Seoul. Good morning, Tony. Are you still... are you there, Tony? Tony Francis is not waiting in Seoul. All right, well, while, while we try to establish contact with Tony, what do you think, Tom, of, of Daly's position at the moment? Uh, not good. Uh, he's a first-day man. His first day is a strong day, and um, he didn't have a great first day. Um, particularly the 400 metres, Barry, I mean, 49 seconds. He hasn't done that since he was a young lad, since mm. I first met him, really. So he's struggling. He's struggling. But if he gets about, say, 14.6, 14.7 in the hurdles, he might stay in, in contention because Schenk isn't a very good hurdler. He's about a 15-second mm. hurdler. So it's possible he could stay in contention. But it's going to be the toughest f last five he's ever faced in his life. No doubt about that. Your, yes, I think so. And, and, and he's not going to be able to treat the 1,500 metres as a lap of honour this time, is he? Which is what he normally does. No, 1,500 metres is eyeballs out job. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> um, uh, I mean, Daly's going... I mean, Daly normally just does the 1,500 metres as, sort of as a lap of... as you say, lap of honour. Yeah. But, I mean, when I first started with him, he used, he used to ask for feeding stations. Yeah. So he's not an endurance <laughs> athlete. And I think he's got a lot of guts, Daly. He's never had to show them in the 15, but he may have to show them today. But I think he's got great difficulties because he's just a wee bit hang, back. Hang on, Tom. I think we, we can get here? Tony Francis now in Seoul. Good morning, Tony. Hello, Tony. Oh. Oh, this is getting exciting, isn't it? Oh. This that is a fine up. time of the morning to go to work, isn't it? Even the Koreans, who are notoriously early starters, are only just up and kicking. But if you're nicknamed Superman and you want to keep that Olympic flame burning, there's no time to lose. Day two of the decathlon starts earlier than almost any event in Olympic history, 8.20 a.m. It means that Daly Thompson has to get to the warm-up track before sunrise. There's a warm glow around the main stadium. Not many people see it in this light. And wait a moment, I believe I hear the dawn patrol. <laughs> It's only in the last couple of days that Frank Dick, the British Director of Coaching, has managed to persuade the authorities to switch on the floodlights. Well, one of them anyway. I don't know, 6.35. Either he's late or I've got the wrong day. 
Sure enough, 10 minutes later, the reigning Olympic champion arrived, but he wasn't feeling very talkative. Early start, Daly. Under the Korean moon, Daly stirred his limbs into action for what could be the most telling session of his career. At 30, he's been written off in some quarters, and he knew that he had a major task to improve on his overnight placing. Schenker, the East German leader, was looming large. And Plazia, the Frenchman in second place, clearly felt good about his chances. Daly was lying third with the 110 meter hurdles facing him in an hour and 20 minutes time. At least daylight would be here by then, although that early morning chill would still be in the air. So here we are then in the main stadium, a few shafts of sunlight taking that early morning chill away. We're ready for the first heat of the day and it's Peter Matthews to describe the men's 110 meter hurdles. Well, here's Daly Thompson going in uh, lane five here. It doesn't really matter so much where he finishes in this race. All that matters is his time and therefore the points that he scores on the scoring tables. Because none of the men in this particular race are the leading rivals that he's got for the medals. Except perhaps the young Finn in lane six, that's nearer to us. Petri Keskitalo, who's been going really well. The important thing, though, is how fast can Daly run the hurdles? Personal best of 14.06, he's off very well. So too is Keskitalo hitting hurdles though next to him. On the inside, Mike Smith of Canada, nearest the camera, Vorming, and Keskitalo is coming through, and Vorming and Smith, and Thompson is now coming along in fourth place. The winning time there, 14.26, but for Daly Thompson, a time of around 14.7. It's some way down on his best, but perhaps it's about as good as we could hope for. And uh, Thompson, of course, with four more crucial events to come this day, is in there fighting very hard one has to say at the moment that his medal chances look rather slim but let's look again on the slow motion head-on replay of daly thompson always a great competitor he's won so many gold medals in the decathlon and it's very unusual for him to be starting off a second day not leading by some hundreds of points in fact he's in third place that's 138 points down on christian Schenk. he hits a few hurdles here but he's battling away battling hard coming over the final hurdles here and Daly Thompson only fourth in this race but some quite useful points I thought he might do a time of around 48 it is in fact slightly quicker Daly Thompson's been given a time of 14.72 in the first race of the second day of the 110 meters hurdles right well what do you make of that Tom well, it's bearing in mind his 100 meter speed's lower now, and that's about as good as you could expect. But you could see him there getting higher and higher and more and more ponderous over the barriers. Similarly, he hasn't done the event this year, hurdles, and he hasn't done a decathlon this year, and you can see he's rusty. At the beginning, he was able to get off with an explosive power, but as you get further and further up, it get more and more ponderous. Mm. He's staying in contact with the first three or four, but uh, I'll reckon relative to Plasiat, who's coming up quite soon, he'll probably lose about um, 60 points. Plaziat should run in the low 14s, so he's losing out to him. So what do you think of his medal chances? Yeah, they're getting de slightly dimmer. Yeah. Would well, you have a word with Peter Matthews? Because I, th I, uh, I think we can make yeah. contact with him in Seoul at the moment. Although the oh, yes, indeed, Peter is there. Okay. Peter, what do you feel now about the medal chances? I tend to feel they're getting thinner now. Well, I think Daly is probably heading for a score of somewhere around 8,300 odd points, and I don't think that's going to be enough. I'm impressed with the young East German, Christian Schenk. Yes. Most people in this decathlon have been a little bit below par, but Schenk set three personal bests yesterday. And if he can keep up this sort of pace, he should be on a score of around about 8,500, maybe even more. And Plaziara of France is also going well with a score of perhaps 8,450 or so. And as those sound, that's quite some way ahead of what I would project for Thompson. There are also some other people with good second days, like Dave Steen of Canada, Tarnovetsky of the Soviet Union, De Witt of Holland. And I think some of those may overcome daily. But of course, Tom, we must never write him off, must we? He's a redoubtable competitor, and at least he'll keep in there fighting. Yes. The big problem is there's not much slack left now, because uh, the discus doesn't give him big points, does it? His vaulting hasn't been great this year. His javelin is not a fantastic event, and 1500 has never been a strong suit. So he doesn't have really much slack, does he? Well, that's that's right. I mean, he's going to need a series of small miracles. I mean, as you said before, Tom, he's going to have to run the 1500 meters really hard. But of course, as we saw really last night in the 400 meters, he really looked very ragged indeed, I thought, in that event. And I, I can't honestly say that I would expect him to be able to run a very fast 1500 if he had to. 
Yes. I mean, the big, the key factor with Schenker definitely was that high jump, where he just started to pile up the points, didn't he? It was a marvellous display, wasn't it? 227 in the high jump, and uh, the old-fashioned technique there too, Tom. Well, I haven't seen that uh, for, <laughs> for many a year, a straddle. Hang, hang on, Tom. I think we can see heat two now, which is yeah. where most of Daly's main rivals are, are running. Oh. We then had heat two of the decathlon 110 metre hurdles and this was most interesting because most of the leading rivals for medals line up there. There's number 476, Christian Schenk, slapping Today his cheeks and just turning round now, Christian Plazia of France. And Plazia is a specialist at the hurdles, he's got a best of 14-1. To complete the lineup, we then go in lane three, Kulvet of the Soviet Union, De Witt of Holland, Dave Steen of Canada, there's a blank lane where a Paichev would have been, then Torsten Voss of East Germany, who's still in with a chance, the world champion, and Alain Blondel of France. So to recap, at the end of the first day, Schenk was leading, Plazia in second place, and Daley Thompson in third, with Voss fourth. And Plazia very quickly into his running, the specialist hurdler, running really well, De Witt, the Dutch...